Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. Okay, so in reality, we all know what the purpose of this EV tax credit is really for. So let's just call a spade a spade and say it's for the purpose of the legacy auto companies to have a chance of survival against Tesla. And a lot of the reason for such a generous incentive is to do with the ties between the UAW and the government. So the motivation of the bill would be to keep the jobs within the current legacy auto sector. So let's explore how this credit helps. Unfortunately for the legacy autos, there's a vastly superior innovative new mousetrap on the market that is eating up their market share by the name of Tesla. Well, the issue is that with all the legacy autos trying to compete at Tesla's price point, they are inevitably losing money on every EV they sell. I mean, this really is the case. The Ford mach -E have also been getting around a $7,500 tax credit this whole time in the US too, and are still losing money. So the fact that Legacy lose so much money per EV sold, and Tesla make so much money per EV sold, is anything they do even comparable? Does it even matter? I mean, why stop there even? Why don't Legacy undercut Tesla and lose even more money per EV they make? Oh right, because they can't even make that many EVs anyway. You need batteries on such a huge scale, like never before. Ford alone now probably need more than the entire amount of kilowatt hours of batteries that were produced back in 2010. How is a car manufacturer suddenly meant to know how to become one of the largest battery manufacturers in the world? It has absolutely nothing to do with their core business, but that's what is required. The world doesn't make close to enough batteries for EVs. They have to find them somewhere. Anyway, legacy autos have already set their price of all their EVs for the next few years. You see, whenever Legacy want to show they can keep up with Tesla, they simply show specifications of a car that's coming out in, say, 2025, and suddenly the range is as good as Tesla, at a similar price point too. Wow, everyone thinks, perhaps Legacy can keep up with Tesla after all, except we can't even imagine the specifications of a 2025 Tesla. But anyway, price points for EVs have been set, like the F-150 Lightning. Legacy are pretty much selling all the EVs they make too, at these current prices and some are still getting tax credits. Now, when this new tax credit in the US kicks in, how will all this extra demand help legacy autos if they're already ramping up as much as they can anyway? And how will it make their cars any more profitable? It will just make longer waiting lists and higher premiums at used car dealers. I repeat, the prices of the legacy EVs are already set. If the tax credit comes in, how does that stop legacy autos making a loss per sale? Okay, so perhaps maybe Legacy do want to take some of the tax credit rebate for themselves. It seems only fair. It's meant to be there to keep them alive. So what's the point of increasing the demand for cars that they lose money on? Because they have to compete at Tesla's price point as best they can. So perhaps if they raise their prices by $5,000, then Legacy perhaps could come close to break even. And $5,000 isn't too far a stretch from the previously set price points. Perhaps they can get away with that much. Oh yeah, they run into another issue from the other end. As Legacy don't control the entire buying experience, they have to pass the sale of the end user onto the third party car dealer networks. And this is where the problem lies in that Legacy can't really raise their prices much higher or they'll hit the price caps for the subsidies. You see, the caps are potentially 10 to $15,000 lower for Legacy autos than Tesla, as they will have a premium added on from the car dealer. As we mentioned, the EV bill will increase demand heavily. And if the car manufacturers can't raise supply and won't raise prices, then the car dealers will be more than happy to oblige enough to raise their prices to match the market clearing price where supply meets demand by adding a ten dollars to $15,000 premium on each car sold, but whilst making sure that premium doesn't take the vehicle over the EV credit cap either. On top of that, the government have also thrown Legacy an extra dilemma too. Do Legacy invest capital to further improve hybrid as well, or do they invest solely on electric? This is what happens when government get involved. It affects the natural growth of a business. Decisions are made as to game the system rather than what's best for the customer. Legacy autos are going to be spending 30 to $50 billion to make this transition, which will end up costing another $5,000 per car, including interest and amortization. And that's when they get up to selling a million cars a year, which means they'll probably still be losing thousands of dollars per vehicle sold, except it will be a million vehicles a year instead of 100,000 or so, which is a loss of perhaps $5 billion a year. That's a lot of profit required to subsidize that which might also be hard if the part of the business that is meant to be subsidizing this loss is a failing ice business. The failing ice business means that they have to close down a lot of plants, and it would appear that these plants are not going to be reused for their EVs, judging by Ford's new EV plant they've just announced. 
If Ford are going to be closing their ICE car factories and opening up new electric ones, then for starters, this factory is obviously being built to take advantage of the tax credit. But it means that surely the unions will be unhappy closing down these factories and laying off workers. Ford are targeting 40% transition to EVs by 2030. But it's the most outrageous thing to say, and absurdly arrogant. Really, the audacity of them to think that they can predict what people will want in 10 years' time. And to say that over half of drivers will still want to buy some form of internal combustion. These are lies. Probably lies to the government to reassure them that they will keep people employed for 10 years. And it will be a gradual transition. But they're already closing down plants. And now to see them building new ones for electric. This says a lot. This is going to be the single largest factory in Ford's 118 year history. It would look like Ford are going all in for electric. There'll be no going back from this investment but I still don't see how it will help them make a profitable EV. And I still don't see how their ice business won't be a huge liability. Perhaps this new factory is for Ford's F-150 Lightning. They don't appear to say anything about capacity or date it will be complete rather than mentioning 1 million units a year halfway through the decade. But I guess Ford got the memo that it's go electric or die. And then they'll see what business they have left when they invest everything they can into attempting to be anything remotely like Tesla just because their brand somewhat resembles the product group category that Tesla belongs, along with the backing of the US government if they fail. And Tesla is almost a trillion dollar company, so just to catch any segment of that market, and it will be worth a fortune. They can find 30 to $50 billion and throw money at the entire situation, and hopefully something might stick. The iconic electric Ford Mustang brand, the best-selling auto in America, the F-150, the beast of an EV, a Hummer, the luxury of electric Mercedes, the sportiness of a battery-powered Porsche. If any of these brands work and find a piece of the market, then perhaps they can make $10,000 profit per vehicle sold. If Ford and GM can each make 1 million EVs a year, then that's still $10 billion gross profit. If that was $5 billion net, and with a PE ratio of 30 on an EV business, it's worth $150 billion, significantly more than what the rest of their business is worth today. So this is the transition legacy need to attempt but they'll never be able to compete anywhere near on superchargers as Tesla have had such a head start and it takes such a long time to build the infrastructure. Tesla have already taken all the best spots too with first mover advantage from being years and years ahead. And then Legacy also have no chance with FSD. Ford's equivalent even struggles with a gentle bend in the road. But the fact Tesla are willing to give up these two enormous barriers of entry to the likes of the Legacy autos means they will thus have to accept Tesla. The battle is over and the war was won long ago. These companies have no chance against Tesla and should stop comparing themselves. As soon as any of them are willing to accept Tesla as an ally rather than a foe, then the more successful they'll be earlier. They need to adopt Tesla's technology and infrastructure to get them on a closer playing field with Tesla against the other competition who don't take on board Tesla's help as immediate. Perhaps Volkswagen will be the first to admit defeat and CEO Herbert Diess is already publicly in awe of Elon Musk. But how many legacy brands can get away with a price tag that will still give them $10,000 profit per car, whilst at the same time, they need to absorb economies of scale, so it won't help just being a rare expensive car like a Porsche Taycan, although it may be selling very well. As far as a Porsche is concerned, think of the cost involved for a car with still such few sales. When compared with something like a Model 3, there may end up being no balance suitable in fact, it will be tough for any one model to be mass marketed when there is already Tesla doing that. Anyway, it will be interesting to see what models Legacy can bring out that may survive the EV transition. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.